All right. So the last one, I get to start and end this. Um, talking about Pascal for the tricuspid. All right. So as you can see, this is the Pascal device. And essentially, it's been designed and utilized first off on the mitral side and is being studied also on the tricuspid side. This implanted device essentially comprises a central spacer with these broad curves paddles, and you can't quite see them in this view, but I'll show you in a moment, and these clasps to independently grab onto each leaflet to anchor it, to hold it in place. The other thing, if you look close at this, it's hollow. And so if you held it in your fingers, you can actually squish it. Not quite like a therapy ball, but similar concept. Uh, and so I think that speaks to a little bit its gentle approach to the tricuspid valve leaflets and mitral when it's used there. It's also delivered by a catheter-based system. So you've got multiple degrees of freedom in a catheter-like plane. So you can take some pretty tight radius of curvatures to position it, to, to locate it where you need to from a transfemoral venous approach to the tricuspid valve. Some of the key points of this device is you can independently grab one leaflet and gently swing over to grab another leaflet. One of the nice things about that is it allows you to be creative. One of the dangerous things about that is you're being creative. So you've got to be careful you're not distorting, you're not pinwheeling on the valve. Um, the, the overall device itself, in addition to being a little bit softer than a harder device, is that is all the surfaces are rounded. So it also can be elongated out. So it is much harder in either a cadaveric model when we played around with that or in a living human being to get stuck in cords with this device. So I think you can't do it with abandon, but you can move it around a fair bit more with less risk of getting yourself stuck in places you don't want to be. So here's an example of a case, and this is one of the first ones ever done in a compassionate use. Neil Pham loaned me these images from this very first case. As you can see, severe TR. And then the device itself images quite nicely, but with all these devices that you're doing leaflet capture, really 3D or transgastric short axis images are key to helping yourself understand where you are in the valve. And at least in his hands with this first case here, got a beautiful result after placing two of these Pascal devices onto the regurgent tricuspid valve. So there was a few more centers getting together and pulled their experience to a compassionate use experience. We call that the class TR, part of the class TR studies that I'll tell you a little bit more about. And in this observational experience, they define procedural success as being able to place at least one device with reduction of the TR grade to two plus or less without mortality or conversion to surgery, and they follow patients out 30 days. These are the sites in the United States or Canada and or Germany involved, and they treated 28 patients. They had two die before making it to the 30-day mark, so we have 30-day follow-up data on 26 patients, which I'll show you here. Here's the baseline characteristics of them. And as you sort of can see, very similar to a lot of these patients we're all talking about that come into these tricuspid valve trials. Um, fair bit of comorbidities as they're farther along in their presentation. So they had procedural success in 24 of the 28 patients. So there was four in which they either had two SLDAs or, and two others where they just, the operators were not able to adequately reduce the TR by implantation of the device. And so average about one and a half devices placed, which is a little bit less than what we've been seeing on the mitral clip on the tricuspid experience. They, in the vast majority of cases, they did use the functionality of independent leaflet capture. The procedure times were about two hours, so not terribly long with this device. They had no mortality and no conversion to surgery. So as a result, their 30-day safety outcomes, other than two patients that expired due to reasons that were adjudicated as not related to the device and not related to the procedure. One had progression of the underlying heart failure, another had mortality due to a totally unrelated issue. 
otherwise, the safety profile looked really quite encouraging. There's no strokes, no MIs, uh, no cardiac injury or renal injury. Um, one patient did have to come back for a heart failure rehospitalization. As I mentioned, there was two patients who had uh, SLDA, uh, was device single device leaflet attachment. With all of that, then looking in their analysis for how they reduce the TR, they had a significant reduction of TR in 85% of patients getting the two plus or less. I would caution, though, take these results with a grain of salt because these are not core lab adjudicated data. These are site reported data. But having said that, it still looked pretty encouraging. Their results. And the patient's symptoms, as reported by each of the sites, was significantly improved, about similarly so. 88% of them were mildly or not symptomatic at 30 days. Obviously, all this is an observational study in a very small number of patients. But based on that, really gave us a lot of encouragement that this device can perform as intended with a reasonable safety profile here, allowing us then to go into the next step, which is an early feasibility study here in the United States, which is multi-centered, still single arm, enrolling patients with severe TR that were deemed high surgical risk by the local heart team. Procedural success was defined very much as before, but also looking at clinical and device outcomes at 30 days. The inclusion and exclusion criteria, as you can see here, was uh, more significant degrees of TR, moderate, severe, or severe. Um, this was based, written on the four grade scale at the time. And uh, looking for also clinical parameters as well. Here are the sites involved in that trial that's just getting underway in the United States. And these are the endpoints that we're going to be looking at. You know, a composite of major adverse events for uh, looking at 30 days and performance outcomes, how the device is performing, the overall procedure, and clinical outcomes for the patient. This trial has just started enrolling, and so we hope to have data by the time we see you all here next year. So with that, thank you.